I, I had several conversations with Mr. Clark um, because I was very interested in shrinking city legislation um, because the city was built um, for half a million people. Um, now we over 260, so we're in half of what we used to be. And so why don't we shrink? And then once you shrink, and then you start to mothball certain areas, you know, where you just don't do any development there. You know, you can turn off the water, you can turn off the utilities, keep the grass cut, make it look real new, nice, real low it's maintenance efforts, keep it clean, keep it nice, and then do that critical mass where people are. And that's where you start to do your development. And then once that comes to a point of saturation, then you start to redevelop and reclaim those lands that you mothball. And so that's the conversations that I had with, with Mr. Clark and, uh, and Anthony. Um, and, and that was an interest. And I think that we should still look at some of those things. It's starting to shrink the city um, because we're by one of the fresh water sources. Um, in a couple of decades, water is going to be very valuable. Um, and so then you start to see people moving back into the area. Um, you see people moving back and forth already, especially out in New York City. Um, you start to see people move into the area, starting to retire, because a lot of people bought those big houses out in the suburbs. Um, and now the kids are grown. They got all this grass. They got to cut all the snow. They got to shovel all this house. And it's just two people in there. And so people are downsizing. You know, they're shrinking and they're moving, getting condos and lofts in the city. You know, let's look at it. We should look at that. We should look at it really seriously shrinking the city. Um, well, it's more of a, a bigger cooperative with Erie County, um, Cheektowaga, Tonawanda, Lackawanna, and Buffalo, um, in which they they kind of pool the, their resources in and for property's sake. Um, it's kind of a limited piece, and the agreements were put in place in order to ask for the state to to give them a land bank. So we don't have a land bank yet. We put it to, uh, a bunch of uh, memorandums of understanding and cooperative agreements in order to have the state grant us a land bank. The state is going to grant, I think, five land banks, and they're looking for any municipal cooperation at the moment. And so that's where it is right now. And so everybody's got together. It's before the state. Hopefully the state grant us to say, all right, we want to give you guys a land bank because everybody's working together on it. Damone, what does this mean for Buffalo, for the Maston District? We've talked in the past about abandonment and vacancy mm -hmm. issues. What will the land bank do to help us in the neighborhoods? Now, the land bank that is coming, uh, that, that is proposed, you know, it's, it still has to be defined on exactly what it's going to do. But a regular neighbor like my, me and yourself, I'm one of the biggest ones in site lot uh, acquisition or disp uh, 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 allocations. That means a, a house torn down next to you, it's a lot right there. You want to go and buy it from the city. Then they say, well, we have to sell it at fair market value. And then they say, well, you know, it's assessed at 1400 So I ain't paying 1400 for an empty lot. And they say, well, it's a ways to do it. You can go and get an assessor um, to go out. The assessor come out. Usually the assessor costs you in between be three and $500 to have them come out and assess. And then they say the lot is worth $300, but you just spent 500 so you spent $800 for a lot anyway. Um, a land bank allows the option to, to for land disposition, side lots, um, lot at the corner, lot in the back of you. You want to buy these lots. Make it easier to transfer money because they put laws in place um, to stop people from just giving away land for free because people abused it. And so that's one of the things as far as citywide um, that the uh, a land bank would be able to do. Um, as well as a, a land bank, I mean, depending on how far it goes and how what is the enabling legislation. Um, and a land bank could go as far as, um, say, the foreclosed auction. Um, the city can say, you know what, these houses here, we're going to take we, we're going to take them. And then the city can sell them back to the original owners. Like, say, your houses and the bank foreclosure. And most of the time, the banks, what they do is they... they uh, um, put put your taxes in escrow. That means they protect their interest. They pay the taxes, and or while you pay pay the mortgage in order to protect their interest. But with a lot of these properties, once the mortgage stops, the taxes stop, and then it comes up to the city, and it's on, owned by a bank. And so the bank owns the property if it's in foreclosure. 
we can take it out. The city, uh, through a land bank can take it, renegotiate the mortgage deal, make it more feasible for the homeowners. And so it's, it's a lot that you can do with a land bank. Um, they done not use land banks, or they're starting to use land banks all over the country. They're doing it in Flint. They're doing it in Cuyahoga County. Um, they're doing it in Dayton. They're doing it in a whole lot of places. And so that's why we were pushing the land bank. So, and I think that's why you got all these municipalities to agree, as well as even the county, because remember the county guarantees all of the tax levies in their in their municipalities. You know, so if somebody don't pay the taxes, you know, the town says, all right, this is how much is owed for us in taxes. The county pays those taxes, and now if the town doesn't collect on those taxes, the county just loses money. You know, so I mean, this land situation. Is very serious, not just in Buffalo, but in all of Erie County, and it's costing people a lot of money. And the basis of economics is what? Land. And so once you start to get a good land policy going, then you can start to rebound and start to see better economics happen in neighborhoods. You mentioned the tax foreclosure auction. Mm -hmm. What will um, the land bank legislation do on a, say, a neighborhood level when it comes to the tax foreclosure auction, for example, on um, Glenwood Avenue, there may might be uh, seven or eight properties, seven or eight empty lots, a couple houses, or maybe even a, a church mm -hmm. that's in the in the mix at the tax foreclosure auction. What will this do um, for us at the time of the tax foreclosure auction? Will the city take possession of the properties? The city can. Um, as as the foreclosure auction, and the reason why the foreclosure auction is very important is because that's the way that you get land uh, title free. And when I say title free, that means all of the taxes and all of the old debts are wiped off of the of the land because it goes through the the, the auction. Mm -hmm. And so, if you buy a property from the auction, you're not responsible for water bill. You're not responsible for any liens or anything on on the property. Um, right now, the city can't just take properties. You know, the only way they can do it is through eminent domain. Um, and But in, in the tax sale, they would have to compete with other people, speculative investors and stuff like that. As you've been seeing, we've been getting people from Australia, we got people from Israel, we got people from England. And, and the majority of them turn out to be slumlords. They don't take care of their properties. Not all of them, the majority of them do. Um, now the city doesn't have to compete with those outside interests. Um, they can just say, you know what, we want to rehab this area. Um, we see a number of houses all in the row. They come up for the tax auction. The city can take it and be responsible for it. Remember, the city is not responsible for all vacant houses because they all are not city properties. Just because it's vacant don't mean it's the city property. The city was never set up to actually be a landlord and to deal in properties. The infrastructure was never, when our founding fathers was putting together cities, they did not anticipate that the city would be responsible for properties. So this is something relatively new, people junking houses on the taxpayers. Um, and so the land bank kind of helps with that. And you have a, a, a organization, um, almost like an authority. I mean, and people don't like authorities, but pretty much that's what we're looking at. Almost like an authority that's focused on the housing. And then, you know, and, and, and depending on how far the people really grasp the situation, um, you can start to address urban sprawl. You can start to do smart growth. You can do all of these things through the land bank, you know. Um, if people, you know, people want to limit to where they go, uh, to where you want to put businesses at, you know, you can stop people. Because what was happening, especially in the county, you have people who would just go and see a patch of land. Say, so, oh, we're going to build a housing complex there. And they build a housing complex and they say, well, county, state, y'all put in the utilities to, to the houses, which costs more you know, on, on, uh, on infrastructure costs to county municipalities. You know, so depending on how far people really grasp the idea of a land bank is, is how good it's going to be.